People talk about Long Beach and they often talk about the beach and boardwalk. The beach and boardwalk are so integrated into the culture of Long Beach. But it was, it was sort of a bit of a wilderness in your backyard. And you know, how many places are there like that along a, an urban environment uh, that we live in today? You know, only uh, 20 odd miles from New York City. And here we have wetlands that just are probably, I'd like to believe as pristine as they were 100 years ago. In the 50s growing up here, I'd always heard that the population increased dramatically during the summer. Uh, and then in the winter, many people left because there were many bungalows, especially in the West End, where, where they, they, they were built without heat. Long around the 1950s, I think suddenly post-World War II, the population started to say that this was going to be a home. This was not just going to be a place to come for the summer. But Senator Reynolds uh, dredges the channel and that allows boats to come in and another way to access Long Beach. In fact, he, would, he had a yacht. He didn't have a home, a permanent home in Long Beach, but he had a, a yacht and he would often live on the yacht in Reynolds Channel, his namesake, which was kind of neat. <laughs> also, he filled in the two inlets that existed. There was one just about a block here around where Pacific Boulevard is at the end of this block. And um, that had always been a problem. There at one time had been a marine railway that went all the way down to Point Lookout, but it would be washed out on many an occasion um, from the remnants of these inlets. So those were filled in, the marine railway was closed, and also there was another inlet further down to the west of Long Beach, and those were filled in as well. So now we had an island about 10 miles long and uh, called the Island of Long Beach. And his vision was to make this kind of the, he called it the Riviera by the sea. So um, to make it with stucco homes, with red tile roofs, that Mediterranean style was certainly part of his vision. And now as time went on, um, that started to change. And certainly by the 1930s and 1940s, we started to see everything, a more, shall we say, eclectic style of architecture. Uh, the vision of Reynolds is still evident in streets like West Penn Street, where a lot of homes are uh, still the stucco and still the red tile roofs and the brick streets. That's really a remnant of the days, of the heyday of Long Beach, probably in the 1920s. You know, you can see in the wetlands where they're building osprey nests on top of poles, and they're coming back in great numbers. So that's really encouraging that they're finding a home in a place that maybe was given up as um, a wildlife free. And we see seals again. I've been kayaking behind Long Beach in Reynolds Channel, and I see, I've been seeing seals for the last few years. Never saw that as a kid. Uh, it seems like we're seeing more things, more wildlife in the oceans, especially in the bays, and that's really encouraging. We had a lot of fun fishing and always catching killies and spearing, um, and those were the fish that you would use for bait. So taking them out, you, know, you didn't have to go to a bait shop. You caught your bait, you caught your spearing, you caught your killies, and you went fishing. I can uh, just always picture people talking about Peter's Clam Bar, great seafood, and also just sitting outside or going inside and getting raw clams. And um, you know, half the clams of the United States at one point were coming from the Great South Bay and from these wetland areas behind us. And obviously that's changed and we pretty much know why uh, runoff and pollution have made it difficult for clams to exist. But Peter's Clam Bar continues to be one of those iconic places, I think, for, for clams. Uh, so there's a special, I don't know, um, ingredient about the wetlands and being able to see it by kayak is even more special.